Howdy farm friends, I'm Zach. Welcome to Head Family Farm. We are out in the garden this evening. I got Miss Eleanor here helping me out. Say hello, Eleanor. Hi. Eleanor is helping me out. We are looking all around our garden to see just what we're looking at in terms of planting the fall garden as soon as we can. We have got our fall garden uh, seed order in from Haas Tools and so right now we're just laying out deciding where everything's gonna go and how much room we have for everything. So let's take stock real quick. So uh, we've got our Tom multiplying onions that do half of this row right here. The rest of that row is some beautiful looking sweet potatoes. Uh, they are Georgia Jet variety and then uh, they also do half of this row, so we've got a combined row of sweet potatoes here that were already started. And then last month I started the rest of that row of sweet potatoes. So we've got about a row and a half of sweet potatoes already in the ground growing, which is a good thing. We're going to harvest those uh, in the fall around the same time, hopefully, that we harvest these Tom multiplying onions that are that half of that row. We'll break those apart take uh, enough for a row of those and get those back in the ground immediately and we will keep the rest for use in the garden I mean in the kitchen so when we took stock of what we wanted to grow this fall we wanted to make sure that we got some stuff that we could leave in until after the first frost and the reason that that was important for us is because we got a little bit of a later start with our spring garden this year because we had our pigs on our garden plot and they were busting it up um, so they were doing some of the tilling as well as depositing some fertilizer if you know what I mean and uh, so we wanted to give them a little bit of extra time and we also had to build this fence that goes all the way around our garden as well as that enclosure back there that paddock back there where our pigs are maybe you can see uh, I think that's rooster back there taking a nap right there uh, and then Miss Lucille you can kind of see her right in here but anyways we had to build an area for our pigs to be safe and happy in as well as this area for our garden check this out our fence is not chicken proof as you can see look at that that chicken's jumping up and getting some of my mountain vineyard tomatoes. Um, since we're close to the end of the season on those, uh, I haven't been as picky about the the chickens getting in here. But we are gonna have to uh, we are gonna have to get our fence straightened out so that the chickens can't get in here. Plus, we have a ton of bunnies around here right now. Uh, we must have had a bunch of mama bunnies around. Um, to this summer and spring to be seeing this many bunnies around so I have got to get netting up to keep the bunnies out because we like bunnies around here don't we Eleanor yeah but we want them to keep close to Mopsy because they're Mopsy's friends and we're trying to keep Mopsy contact with them yep and Mopsy is our bunny and what kind of rabbit is Mopsy do you remember Angora rabbit Angora and that's right so she is part of their family and they want to they want to see her be released but so we just let her stay and sure. her, we just let the rabbit stay here sure this is mostly their home yeah we if we can help it we like to let the bunnies do their thing around our place uh, we haven't really had any issues with them yet uh, but the fall garden as you're about to see is going to be a bunch of stuff that bunnies like to eat so we do need to make sure we get some better uh, netting down at the bottom of our fence before that stuff really starts to grow. And we've got a little over a month, close to a month and a half, before we actually plant our starts into the fall garden. Um, so we've got a little while to take care of that. Let's take a look and see what kind of space we've got and what we're thinking about planting. So I told you about the sweet potatoes and the tom multiplying onions. Back there, there's also a couple of yellow watermelons that I'm hoping uh, will do well into the fall. I didn't get any of those uh, yellow watermelons out um, this spring in time to uh, harvest them with the rest of our watermelons, which were right along here. 
Um, so we're hoping to get some of those in the fall. There's a really cool video where I talk about the, uh, the origin of those seeds too. Um, I'll put a link in the description of this video so you can go see that. Um, okay, Eleanor, what are you most excited about that we're going to be planting this fall? What do, you, do you remember anything we're planting? I think the sweet corn is probably my favorite. Okay, yeah, we are, we are actually going to do a plot off to the side of some sweet corn uh, this fall. But right now, uh, do you remember what other stuff we're planting? Do you know what I'm starting today? Well, we got the sweet potatoes, yeah, but also Brussels sprouts. What do you think about Brussels sprouts? Cabbages. Cabbages, yeah. I think the cabbages will do very bad. Yeah, we're planting stuff that is very closely related to cabbages, like Brussels sprouts and collard greens. Bad, the Brussels sprouts are the baddest one in the whole wide world. They you don't like Brussels sprouts? But I'm not saying that. I'm saying they are going to keep our garden garden proof now oh yeah what did we use the how did we use brussels sprouts in the spring we would use them for pest control they would we're not even worrying to get any we're uh -huh. just using them to protect our garden yeah they and made now, a great trap crop and bunnies do not like them yep. so bunnies will get so that's but that's we're planting why them last, we're planting them to eat that's this time. why i was five that's yeah. why i was five when we had is that rooster pecking at the garbage over there? Actually, he's making holes on it. Yeah. Okay, so Brussels sprouts. Um, I'm thinking we're going to do uh, two rows of Brussels sprouts. Can I go back to work? Yeah, I'm going to, whatever you want to say. Um, what do you want to say? I was saying that the Brussels sprouts, um, now that we don't have the Brussels sprouts anymore, that is, and now it's not keeping the bunnies out. We need our bunnies. So we need to keep our brusher spots in here because that's the best place to um, protect our garden. Yep. We're also going to have a trap crop for the fall and we're going to plant it along the edges. So Eleanor was saying we had some Brussels sprouts down there and that wound up being our trap crop. And a trap crop is something you plant to uh, draw bugs away from your other plants and it was an accidental trap crop for us this year we didn't realize they were going to be our trap crop but they worked really well uh, taking away certain types of worms that i was worried about on other plants they all went straight for that uh, brussels sprout so we left them in just for that reason even though it even though we knew we weren't going to get any for the fall we are using some broadleaf mustard um, around the edges of our garden is where I'm going to plant it. Um, that will help keep the weeds off of the fencing and it will also, it'll keep certain bugs completely off our plants. It'll stop certain bugs on their way into the garden and they'll munch on that mustard and leave the rest away. Kind of hoping that it'll be the same way if we get any animals that wind up in the garden, any critters, hoping that the, the mustard will be enough to keep them away from the other stuff. Um, so, you know so far that we're doing Brussels sprouts. We're going to do two rows of Brussels sprouts. And I'm thinking that the Brussels sprouts are going to be what we plant right here next to the sweet potatoes. Uh, you can see down there those watermelon plants. We'll plant all the way down to the watermelon plants, one every foot. And then we'll do the same thing on the next row all the way to the end. So after we do the Brussels sprouts, we move up to our next, uh, our next crop, which will be um, collard greens. And we're using flash collards. And since they will be low to the ground, like a lot of the stuff we're planting, I'm going to plant them towards the center of the garden so we can see over them to the other plants. So uh, right now I've got some purple opal basil growing on this row, just kind of holding that dirt in place and uh, soaking up some of the goodness from the garden. Uh, we had some Genovese basil that really took off when we did that. So we planted this purple opal just to see how big it could get in the next month or so. Uh, while we wait on our seeds to start. So these two rows will be our flash collards. Also the Brussels sprouts, let me give you a little bit of information about the type of Brussels sprouts that we're growing right here. 
Jade Cross Brussels Sprouts are a hybrid early maturing variety with a maturity date of 90 days. And here is a little bit of information about the flash collards that we're going to be growing on these two rows. The flash collard variety is a hybrid collard variety that is the slowest to bolt offered by Haas Tools. It has excellent heat tolerance. So that takes care of our collard greens and our Brussels sprouts that will be over on this side with our sweet potatoes and onions. So on this other side where we currently still have tomatoes, peppers, and okra, uh, we're going to start off the first two rows here uh, with cauliflower. And we are growing three different types of cauliflower. Um, and so one row will be kind of a plainish white looking Brussels sprout, I mean uh, cauliflower, excuse me, uh, called twister cauliflower. And here's a little bit about twister cauliflower. Twister cauliflower has large heavy heads and excellent wrapping. The variety gets its names from the leaves that twist around the cauliflower head to wrap and protect it. Y'all know us, we can't halfway do something. So we are gonna do that twister cauliflower that you just heard about, and we're also going to do two other types of cauliflower, one that's a yellowish orange and one that's a purple. Check those out real quick. Flamestar cauliflower is a hybrid variety that produces beautiful pastel orange heads with great flavor. These plants have high tolerance to heat and stress. With 68 days to maturity, the De Purple Cauliflower is a truly outstanding hybrid variety that makes a beautiful and colorful addition to any garden. So once we've got the cauliflower in the ground, we'll move on to these next two rows. Uh, so as a quick uh, reminder, we've got Brussels sprouts, collard greens, cauliflower, and then two rows of broccoli. So those are our four main things that we're going to try uh, in our fall garden this year. Those are going to be our staples because those are things that we know that we will eat a lot of. So when they come out, we'll preserve what we can't eat right away, but we will eat a bunch right away. So Brussels sprouts, collards, cauliflower, and broccoli are things we know that we'll eat. So here is a little bit of information about the type of broccoli that we've chosen and the reason that we've chosen it. Green Magic Broccoli is a heat tolerant broccoli that can be grown earlier in the fall than most varieties. It has great flavor and uniform production. And then on our final row after our broccoli, we're gonna grow some Swiss chard. Um, it is a fun, colorful variety and let's talk a little bit about it real quick. We chose the Bright Light Swiss Chard, which is a colorful blend of Swiss Chard varieties. It's resistant to early bolting and extremely resistant to insect pressure. All right, so let's head up to the potting bench and we'll go ahead and start planting some seeds so that in anywhere from four to six weeks, we will have our seed starts ready to go into our garden. So as a reminder, we've got sweet potatoes already in and some onions over there. We are gonna have two rows here of, of Brussels sprouts. After the Brussels sprout rows, we'll have two rows of collards, then two rows of cauliflower, then two rows of broccoli, and that last row, we will have Swiss chard. Now, I also want to do some onion and some garlic. So I'm thinking about using a couple of raised beds that I have up near the house for the onion and garlic um, out of this main garden. Um, now, if we have space in the main garden, if we have a bunch of starts that don't go just right, or uh, we have a bunch of plants that just don't take off, um, there's a good chance that I'll put, um, I'll put either garlic or onion in the ground uh, when we get to October because October's the time that we go ahead and plant our garlic around here Same thing with onions if you want to overwinter them So some of what we've got out here will be ready to come out in October including uh, Our Tom multiplying onions. We'll take those out and evaluate and probably plant another row of those um, And I'm hoping our sweet potatoes will be done uh, around that same time so that we can go ahead and plant some overwinter stuff there 
Um, and we'll just see where we're at with our other crops. If our other crops look like, if some of them look like they're petering out, um, if we've already gotten most of the cauliflower and broccoli out of the way, we may plant some garlic and onions there. But I do think I'm going to use my raised beds up near the house uh, so that I've got somewhere to put that onion and garlic uh, harvest just in case there's no room here in the garden down here when it's time to put those in. So to start off, we're going to start some of our Jade Cross Brussels sprout seeds. Now I'm going to put them right here in the first 15 cells on two rows there because my rows in my garden, my rows in my garden are 30 feet long uh, for where I plant and on each of that foot mark at each foot there is an emitter from my drip tape irrigation system. So I am going to have 30 of these on, on each row that I plant these on, planted right on top of one of those emitters so that I can control exactly how much water gets to these Brussels sprouts. So I've got my Brussels marker. I'm going to put that right there. And I'm going to start putting these tiny seeds in here. Uh, one seed per cell because the germination rate on cells that I get from Haas Tools uh, constantly surprises me. I get almost 100% germination rate on every seed that I get from them, so um, I feel confident just doing one seed per cell. Except for that one. That one got two. <laughs> now I've just made an indention in each of these cells. Um, just a very small indention. The packet says that the seed depth should be one fourth of an inch. And so I'm thinking that these little indentions that I've made are about a fourth of an inch. So I will just go back over and cover these up uh, with some more of this potting or this starting mix, seed starting mix in just a minute. And now for seed starting mix, you can use a lot of different things. Uh, what I choose to use is half peat moss, half perlite. So one part peat moss, one part perlite. Um, and the reason I do that is just because it's easy and cost effective and I know that it works. Um, I know that there are more sustainable things to use other than peat moss and I would love to move to those in the future. It just so happens that I've got peat moss readily available at the moment and so that's what I'm going to use. So use what you've got close by. If you have the luxury of being able to be choosy about what you use, uh, by all means, do what's good for the planet, do what's good for you. Um, but right now what I've got um, readily available is peat moss. So I'm using half peat moss, half perlite mixture. Um, it's all pre-soaked, so every bit of it is wet. If you don't pre-soak and put it into the tray wet, then you stand the chance of having little pockets of peat moss in there that won't accept water into them, and they'll just stay dry, and they'll actually uh, push water away from that cell. So um, I went ahead and pre-soaked. That way I know that the peat moss will accept that water and that the perlite and peat moss are mixed in well. Um, and so I don't have to worry about air pockets and that sort of thing. So next up, we've got our broccoli. And we chose the Green Magic Broccoli. So our seeds are ready to go. Look at that. The nice, wonderful folks over at Haas sent us a, a marker. So we don't even need the little one we made. We'll put that marker right in there for our Green Magic Broccoli. Once again, I'm just going to put one of these tiny seeds in each of the indentions in these cells. And I'm going to do 30, which will get me one row. And later on, I will go back and start more seeds. Uh, like I told y'all, I'm going to be doing two, seed, two rows of each of these types of, of brassicas. Uh, but... 
I only had one 162 cell uh, flat uh, ready to go at the moment. So that's what I'm going to show you now. And then I'll go back and use my other 24 cell uh, starter kits, which are awesome. Um, I'll use those for the rest of them. This is the 162 cell uh, seed starter flat from Haas Tools. I like it a lot. It is super sturdy. Uh, it's built to let water drain just right out of the bottom uh, so that it can dry towards the bottom. Now, whenever you let uh, cells like this that you're starting seeds in dry out a little bit, it trains those, uh, those roots, those starting roots, to go down towards the bottom some. Uh, you can encourage that by bottom watering, which you can do with these 162 cell trays if you buy the, uh, the tray that they fit into. Um, but also, as it naturally dries from the top, it'll, treat, it'll teach those to come down. Also, I find that these cells are just a perfect size to get your uh, seeds started in and to get a good, healthy seedling. Um, it, typically, uh, six to eight weeks is a good time frame for starting seeds and this is just the perfect size for that if you're going to go any longer than eight weeks um, and even pushing into that eight week area i would use the 24 count the 24 cell starter trays um, i'm going to link both of those in the description so you can find those easily if you want to take a look at them um, if i were doing a smaller fall garden i would be planting everything in my 24 cell starter kits from haas they're just great they hold up well and they perform very well next up we're going to do our flash collards so i'm going to get my marker here those markers are very important so you don't get them mixed up so i've got my flash collards i'm going to put these in real quick next we'll do our twister cauliflower seeds which uh, these are our white type of cauliflower this year. Uh, we are going to do three different types, white, uh, yellow, orange, and purple. So I will get my marker here for my twister cauliflower. Next we're going to do our flame star cauliflower. This one is our yellow orange variety. Eleanor is super excited about this. Her favorite color is yellow. I'm hoping that this will get her uh, really into cauliflower this fall because we are always looking for healthy things uh, for her that she enjoys eating. So I think this Flame Star cauliflower being her favorite color is going to be a good bet. So I'm going to get my Flame Star marker here. I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to do this row down to here of the flame star and then I'm gonna fill in some more over here as well and we'll plant our other type of cauliflower along those rows as well the final seed that we're gonna plant this evening is the de purple cauliflower I'll have to show you a picture on the screen there because uh, the picture of this one's not on the seed pack but it's the de purple cauliflower all of these seeds have been from Haas like I said at the beginning of this portion of the video, I feel really good about uh, the germination rate that I get from Haas Tools. I'm not just saying that because uh, we're affiliates of Haas, but really, this uh, they test all each batch of their seeds that comes in. This one right here had a germ rate of 98%. See, and that's in the test where they are, are tough on themselves testing that germ rate. So germ rate of 98% for the de purple cauliflower. Um, we may not get 100%, uh, but I have a feeling we're gonna get pretty close. And that's why I only use one seed in each cell unless I'm in a big time hurry and I don't have cell space. Um, at, at that point, believe me, your time is much more valuable than the little bit of extra money if you gotta buy an extra pack of seeds. Uh, your time is way more valuable than that because you only got a certain amount of time before those frosts set in. So uh, the de purple cauliflower uh, is going in next and I'm going to put the marker for that one right here as we start those rows. 
Well, farm friends, thank y'all so much for being here today as we took stock of what we've got out in the garden today and uh, played with the goats a little bit out there. And as we came up here and started our seeds for our fall garden, it means a lot to us that you like to come and hang out with us here uh, on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, it really does just mean the world to us. So thanks so much for being here. Um, we will have these garden starts ready to go, God willing, in four to six weeks. They'll be ready to go out into the rows to start our fall garden, and we'll take you out there with us then. Until the next video, farm friends, thanks so much for being here. Y'all have a good one.